What's your name? I don't know. I'm a stranger here. Stark and severe, witty and wise, Ned Sparks was never far from a sharp observation or cutting remark. Nicely furnished. A Sparks barb was as ubiquitous as a cheap cheroot. He looks like a Bulgarian ball weevil mourning its firstborn. So prodigious were his put-downs that his contracts often stipulated that he be able to write his own asides. I want you to do something out of the ordinary, something uh, distinctive, something that's unusual. All right, I'll go out and get drunk. Born in Guelph, Ontario in 1883, Edward Arthur Sparkman's first professional endeavor was prospecting on the Klondike Gold Rush. Early to rise and early to bed and you live all your life until you're dead. Before striking it rich on the silver screen, Ned toured as a singer, joined a seminary, and worked on the railroad en route to Broadway. It was there he was discovered by Louis B. Mayer, who, catching a look at that impenetrable mug, signed Sparks to a six-picture deal. Unlike some silent stars, Sparks' raspy growl allowed him to transition smoothly into talkies. Let's go get in a corner somewhere. You'll find me very easy to get along with. Another famous stone face, Buster Keaton, is alleged to have claimed that if he'd had Sparks' gruff voice, he would have remained a star until the sound era. I speedily realized that I was not destined to cause the ladies to swoon with romantic ecstasy as they watched me make love to one of their sex, Sparks said. That's what I call knocking them dead. I also defined that comedy, not romantic acting, was my special forte. Listen, pal, take my advice. When a dame gets you going, keep right on going. All sharp angles and edges. Sparks's outline was unique, as was his barbed tongue and surly presence. What do you want? What do you care? You ain't got it. Immovable, implacable, and relentlessly dour. The ultimate curmudgeon and stoic foil to hysterical actresses, mercurial producers. I've got an idea. I don't want to hear it. And gangsters in crisis. His career spanned over 80 films, but his greatest year might have been 1933, which saw three of his most memorable performances. In Gold Diggers of 1933, Sparks plays Barney Hopkins, a producer who has everything he needs to put on a smash hit, except the money to produce it. No money at all. Not even the old shoestring. Predictably, everyone lives happily ever after, except, just as predictably, Ned. In 42nd Street, Sparks is again a producer. Yeah, they got pretty faces too. In need of divine intervention, this time in the form of Ruby Keeler with an assist from Busby Berkeley. And in Best Picture nominee, Lady for a Day, Ned is the ironically named Happy Maguire. Please don't ask me to deliberately break that poor old woman's heart. Well, stop it, you're breaking mine. Despite a prolific career, Sparks insisted that a man should retire by 65 and looked to have done just that after a cameo in 1943's Stage Door Canteen. Don't you ever smile, Mr. Sparks? I'm smiling now. Well, uh, tell me, sir, how did your face get that way? Don't you know everything is frozen these days? <laughs> but Jimmy Stewart managed to lure him back for one last film, 1947's Magic Town after which Stewart presented his friend with a huge cake reading to honor a great actor and a fine man. Come on, take a bow. Come on, come on, take a bow. Huh? His daughter later recounted it was the only time she saw her father in tears. Everyone knows Ned Sparks. There's one in every town and often in every family, Sparks said of the persona he struck gold with. I created him because he's a character that everyone knows but doesn't understand until I showed him up as somebody to be laughed at. Ned Sparks, what a character.